In the Horn of Africa, Somalia is the continent's most easterly country. It has the longest coastline in mainland Africa, stretching more than 3,000 kilometers along the Indian Ocean, the Gulf of Aden, and the Red Sea. Its location turned Somalia into a strategically important trading center in the ancient world. But if you go to Mogadishu, if you go to Hargeisa, if you go to Garawa, if you go to Kismaya, and you go to schools that ordinary people have put together, those young and women in those schools are more eager to learn than my students here at the University of Minnesota. Around 12 million Somalis, most of them herders, farmers, and fishermen, live in the country's 600,000 square kilometers. Despite being a member of the Arab League, Somalia's main language is Somali. The only Arabic speakers are people who studied the language or lived in Arab countries. In 1884, the United States and 13 European countries met in Berlin. Their aim to divide the African continents between them. They divided what we know as Somalia into three provinces, each ruled by a different European country. British Somalia, Italian Somalia, and French Somalia. The mainly Somali region of Ogaden was taken by the Ethiopian Empire and the NFD by Kenya. The incredible thing about Somalia is that if you go way back in its history, it's always been either fought over or had foreign powers intervening in some way. Both British and Italian Somalia gained independence in 1960. French Somalia voted to remain under French rule, despite accusations of ballot rigging, but later voted firmly for independence in 1977 and became Djibouti. The former British and Italian territories immediately united, forming Greater Somalia on the 1st of January 1960. Somalis elected Adam Abdullah Uthman as the first president of the United Country. He ruled for seven years and was succeeded after a free and peaceful election by Abdel Rashid Ali Sharmarka. This was when Somalia's peace and stability earned it the nickname the Switzerland of Africa. It was led by General Siad Bare, who would be the dominant figure in Somalia for the next two decades. Somalia's experiment in democracy was over. The rifle, not the ballot box, would now govern the country. Barre dissolved parliament, suspended the constitution, banned political parties, arrested politicians, and limited press freedom. We had only accepted the... Barre's government was supported by the two superpowers of the day, the United States and the Soviet Union. It built the country's infrastructure, and radically improved literacy. I usually use the word collapsed state rather than a failed state, uh, in large measure because it's the government that has collapsed rather than the state of affairs for the whole country. Uh, this is a country at one point that was the best democratic country in Africa. Now it has become, in a sense, the worst because it has, there has been no government in place for 25 years. And so the absence of government means there are no public schools, there are no public security services, there are no public health facilities, there are no public sort of environmental protection, there are no infrastructure that's being built by the state. So the absence of the state means that the government has collapsed but society is trying to make a life in the midst of that madness. Because of the nature of the Somali people, and because the fact that they have been a nation prior to the formation of the state, uh, the modern state system has collapsed. But the nation itself did not collapse. 
maybe Somalia has had a failed political system, failed government, but it's not a failed society. So many things work in Somalia better than they do in lots of other countries. They have one of the most cheap and efficient telecommunication system in the world. Their remittance system is incredible. You can pay mobile payments in, in Somalia that you can't do here. You can go to get your petrol, and you, you just pay by your phone. It's very sophisticated and successful in lots of ways. So I think it's wrong to call it a failed state. <laughs> نعي كذب وحال عدي مركب ذاتك لو مزتا أي بض أي كنا بتجلي وعيان أو مراكب شيء شيء أو كلو مزتا شر عدرها بضة نكوها يا أي غلب كي كلو مزتا أي بابيان أو دوي أي ججبيان أو ذاتك أي بيا بيا كل اللي كشبان وحال خصب كنا غطي ذاتك لو مزتا إن إسكدي فعان مراكب تا شر عدرها ذاك كلو مزتا نسا مركب أجهر رئيسي دت مراكب تكلمسي على غبتي دت جدودي شباك تودي لبابي أو مسألة حد تودي بد لبربوري أي واحد جوستين إن كذا جالمان أو كذا ليان مركزنا وحاكد على تي برعد بدل نما دي أكد على تي ماش أجهر رئيسي برعد بدل نما أكد على تي وحاكد هذا دين عبد عس. It all started for me um, when uh, I went to a region in uh, Somaliland called Sanag, uh, and a little village, a little fishing village. Uh, on the coast where my my family came from, um, and uh, the first time I went there, it was wonderful. Obviously, I, I only saw what people wanted me to see. Uh, but as I started to go there on a regular basis, annually, I noticed that the the fishermen and their activity was getting less and less and less and less. And I noticed at the same time that in the far horizon, there would be these big foreign boats, mother ships, uh, with their little tenders crawling around the sea, scooping up all the fish. Um, a group of youngsters in a little village um, in Puntland, and they um, fed up with the, the, the activities of these um, illegal, illegal fishes, fishing companies, um, boarded the ship one day to protest. Um, and they were told, um, they were told, what do you need to go away? They were given money. That was how it began. Uh, and of course, it then escalated into a, a proper, a proper long-term business with uh, many people benefiting from. برعد ما دفعنا إني مراكب تود دفعنا يعني هذا أي كل دفعنا يعني بدنا إن إني كحاله فيان كلهم إلى إلى الآن وسع تعرفين تاس وكجران مراكب شرع دردا بدوا كجران. International community talks about Somali pirates. There are four kinds of pirates. We study this, and the most costly pirates are not the Somalis who hijack the ships. Are the Italians, the Spaniards, the Belgians, the sort of uh, Chinese, the Indians, uh, the Tanzanians, the Egyptians, and everybody else who is looting the Somali waters? And guess how much they take away every year in free fish? Half a billion dollars every year.